You know, Elon Musk took over Twitter and he banned 44,000 accounts that were promoting child porn. You permanently banned my Twitter account, but you allowed child, child porn all over Twitter. Much. Chair recognizes Ms. Green for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Baker, Ms. Gaddy, Mr. Roth, and Ms. Navaroli. You can consider your speech canceled during my time because you canceled mine. You see, you permanently banned my personal Twitter account, and it was my campaign account also. So let's talk about election interference, shall we? January 2nd, 2002, you permanently banned my Twitter account. This was the account that I would put my campaign ads on, raise money on, fight back when attacked with lies, and be able to talk to my voters in my district. But you banned it. And then let me explain. My account was not reinstated until November 21st, 2022. That was after my election on November 8th. You know, at your company, or your former company, where you worked, Twitter employees, over 98% of them, donate to Democrats. So while you coordinated with DHS, the FBI, the CIA, our government, and outside groups to permanently ban, shadow ban, conservative Americans and candidates like me and the former president of the United States, President Donald J. Trump, you were censoring and wrongfully violating our First Amendment free speech rights. Guess what? None of you hold security clearances. None of you are elected. And none of you represent 750,000 people like I do. Let's explain. 52 United States Law 10101. No person shall intimidate, threaten, coerce, or attempt to stop any other person for the purpose of interfering with their rights to vote or to vote as he may choose. You didn't shadow ban or permanently ban my Democrat opponent. No, you did that to me. And that was wrong, and it was against the law. You see, not only that, was it, a, was it me that you violated my First Amendment rights? You violated countless conservative Americans. These were doctors that were trying to tell the truth about COVID. Doctors that were having success treating people with ivermectin that you all would not allow to be talked about on your platform. These were parents complaining about their school boards, teaching gender lies in their schools, biological males entering their daughter's bathrooms and sports. These were also people questioning the 2020 election. And guess what? That's Americans' First Amendment right. These were people talking about voting machines. You know what? Democrats did that in 2019, before the 2020 election. On Twitter, people could question elections such as 2016, saying Hillary won, but in 2020, no one could question elections saying Trump won. You abused the power of a large corporation, big tech, to censor Americans. And you wanna know something? Guess what? I'm so glad that you're censored down. I'm so glad you've lost your jobs. Thank God Elon, Elon Musk bought Twitter. And you know what? Let's talk about something a little bit further. It's amazing to me, Mr. Roth, as the head and trust of safety at Twitter, your ability, or should I say inability, to remove child porn. Now, here's something that disgusts me about you. In your doctoral dissertation entitled Gay Data, you argued that minors should have access to Grindr an adult male gay hookup app. Minors, really? You know, Elon Musk took over Twitter and he banned 44,000 accounts that were promoting child porn. You permanently banned my Twitter account, but you allowed child, child porn all over Twitter. Twitter had become a platform, you said, connecting queer young adults. You also wrote on Twitter in 2010, can high school students ever meaningfully consent to sex with their teachers? In 2021, while you were the director of trust and safety on Twitter, an underage boy and his mother announced a lawsuit against Twitter because, because Twitter was benefiting from and refused to remove a lewd video featuring this boy and another minor. 
That is repulsive. But you violated me. What, did, what were my tweets? Okay, let's talk about them. I was talking about the deaths being reported on VAERS. By the way, that's on the CDC website. I was also saying that I didn't think the in any entity should enforce a non-FDA non approved vaccine or mask. Guess what? A lot of people agreed with me, but you called that COVID misinformation. By the way, I'm a member of Congress and you're not. I also said the controversial COVID-19 vaccines should not be forced on our military. You want to know something? Republicans stop that in the NDAA. L ladies, time has expired. And your time has expired. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, chair recognizes Mr. Gomez. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Roth, uh, please explain to us why Ms. Uh, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene or the representative from Georgia was removed from Twitter. Thank you for the question, Congressman. My recollection is that her personal account was banned from Twitter after repeated written notices due to repeated violations of the Twitter rules. Can you add a little specificity to the violation of the Twitter rules? Yes. Again, I didn't have access to my Twitter email, documents, anything that would have let me prepare to answer that in more detail. But my recollection is that the Congresswoman repeatedly violated Twitter's policies about sharing misinformation about COVID-19. She received multiple written warnings about that conduct. She received multiple timeouts related to that conduct. And then ultimately, consistent with the written and published policy, those repeated violations resulted in her account being permanently suspended. So uh, Mr. It, Chairman, so in essence, I'd like to the, take a point uh, of personal privilege. Uh, the, it's still my time. We, we'll stop. We'll stop. It's still my clock. It's point still my order, time. Mr. Chairman. Um, the point of order why, by Mr. Raskin. Yeah, I, um, I don't believe that members of this committee have the right to interrupt someone's testimony because their point name was Point of personal mentioned. privilege. And you were mentioning my name, Mr. Raskin. Yeah, no, I understand, but that's not the rule, Ms. Green. I don't think that, a member... That is the rule in, in Congress. Well, members, then I'd like, we a, can I'd, take a point I'd like of the Parliament to bring a rule on whether any member of this committee has the right to interrupt a witness's testimony because they mentioned the name of a member of Congress. You mentioned my name, Mr. Raskin. Yeah, I'm not testifying. Chair recognizes Ms. Green. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For your Chairman. point of privilege, thank, very thank, briefly. Thank you. Um, uh, for Mr. Roth, who, who made you in charge of what is true uh, and what is uh, not uh, true? Uh, 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 we'll, uh, Does she get to reopen her no, question? No, okay. that, that we'll, we'll, we'll go back to Mr. Mr. Gomez. Gomez and, and Mr. Gomez, please remember the, the decorum of the committee. Uh, the clock, we'll restart the clock now. We, you didn't lose any time. Chair recognized Mr. Gomez. Thank you so much. Um, the gentle lady from Georgia was suspended from Twitter for for knowingly and consistently spreading conspiracy theories about COVID-19 vaccine, right? Which is shameful, shameful, especially in a pandemic where millions, a uh, million people have lost their lives. Um, with that, I yield my rest of my time to the gentleman from New York, Mr. Gold, uh, Goldman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gomez. Um, let's talk about the so-called Twitter files, uh, which my Republican colleagues seem to think are God's gift to journalism. In one about the Hunter Biden laptop, the author says that every single fact in the New York Post story was accurate. And Chairman Comer, I notice you blew up the cover of that New York Post story, which I appreciate you doing that because I'd like to dig into this article. The very first paragraph says Hunter Biden introduced his father to a top executive at a Ukrainian energy firm less than a year before the elder Biden pressured government officials in Ukraine into firing a prosecutor who was investigating the company. That is false, 100% false. Is the gentleman sure about that? Yes, in fact, I am sure about that. And as the lead counsel in the first impeachment investigation, we proved that he was actually fired because he was not prosecuting corruption, not that he, he was fired because he was prosecuting corruption. Corruption the of fact that the president's son's agree. company. I, I'm sorry, question. would the gentleman yield corruption of the president's son's company? I'd like to reclaim my time. Gentleman's recognized. The fact that Joe Biden fired consistent with U.S. policy in every single European country, the prosecutor general in Ukraine, 
because he did not prosecute corruption, including at companies like Burisma, has been proven over and over and over. And if you want to know who actually prosecuted Burisma, Chairman Comer, you should talk to the British authorities because they were the ones who were prosecuting Burisma and they couldn't get any cooperation from the Ukrainian prosecutor general. So that's why he was fired. So right off the top, the very first paragraph of this so-called bombshell story is completely false. Now, what are the what is the allegation that we are hearing from our Republican colleagues about the connection to Joe Biden and Burisma? It is an email from a Burisma employee thanking Hunter Biden for organizing a meeting with the Vice President Biden. We know nothing about the substance of that meeting. We know nothing about how long they met. It was not on Vice President Biden's schedule. And in fact, I would ask my Republican colleagues, do you meet with foreign businessmen? Do you meet with foreign diplomats? If we were to say to you every single time you met with somebody that you discussed something that you're voting on, how would you react? It's preposterous. And Chairman Comer, you have said in your opening statement that Joe Biden lied to the American people. That is a bold, bold accusation. And so far, we've seen no actual evidence of any lies or any support for Joe Biden being involved in anything having to do with Ukraine other than promoting U.S. former policy. And I hope that you are not abusing the power as chairman of this, of this committee and that you are not wasting taxpayer dollars on a fishing expedition into a civilian child of a president for political purposes. I yield back. The gentleman yield to a qu quick question. You don't have to, it's your choice. You yield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. please. So I would love to discuss this. Are you admitting that Joe Biden did get the prosecutor in Ukraine fired? Uh, I think it's very clear that Vice President Biden, along with all of our allies in Europe, pressured Ukraine to fire a corrupt prosecutor general who was not charging corruption cases with that would have included potentially Burisma. Corruption with his son's company? Yes. In fact, if what he wanted was the prosecutor general to prosecute corruption okay. and the allegations that you are making and that the Russians are making, because this is all part of Russian propaganda, is that he, uh, Burisma was corrupt and, was, uh, and Joe Biden was trying to stop an investigation into Burisma. That is categorically false and there is no evidence of it. Mr. Chairman. We, we're, gonna, we're gonna recognize one more speaker. We've been re requested by the uh, presenters